We've been looking back all week long, 50 year anniversary for Hurricane Beulah here in the Valley. And I want to welcome this noon, Barry Goldsmith. You are the National Weather Service coordinating, warning coordination meteorologist in Brownsville. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for having nice us. Nice to have today. you here. So 50 years ago, we talk about how it made landfall on the 20th here in the Rio Grande Valley, but it had a history long before that. Correct. It actually began as a wave over Africa nearly a month before that. Oh, wow. It finally took some time to get going, but it became a depression, as you see here, east of Barbados, and then made its way quickly westward initially and rapidly intensified to a Category 4 south of Puerto Rico. It didn't affect Puerto Rico very much. And then it moved to the west and got impacted by the Hispaniola area, decreased to a tropical storm, almost a depression east of Jamaica, and then lost its wind shear and its dry air. The moisture was there, quickly became a Category 3 east of the Yucatan Peninsula, weakened slightly to a 2, and then it rapidly intensified to a Category 5 just south of the Rio Grande Valley, and that was the forecast to make landfall as a 5 here in the mouth of Rio Grande, but it fortunately weakened a little bit to a 3 and then became a 1 quickly over land. The problem was we had a lot of heavy rain as it slowly moved through this area, and by September 22nd, today, it was into Mexico, but still producing rain and flooding in the valley. You know, and we talk about, you know, how it doesn't have to be a hurricane to get this much rainfall. Harvey was a perfect example of that. So we talk about hurricanes here and what it would affect it have on the valley, but what about just heavy rainfall? There's more to the story than the category, exactly. Jim, and this is the key with Harvey. So Harvey caused a lot of wind damage in Rockport, but when it was raining in Houston and especially in Beaumont, Port Arthur, the winds were barely tropical storm force, mainly in gusts, but it was rain after rain or band after band, 45 to 50 inches in some places when it was not even a hurricane at that point. You know, we look at 50 years ago, a lot of the people in the valley today weren't around back then. So they don't remember this or don't even know much about this. So it's good that we're looking back on this 50 years later. If a system like this were to come on shore in the valley today, would do you think we're better prepared than we were 50 years ago? I would hope so. So we had 10 to 25 inches of rainfall across the valley. Some areas had 30 inches back in 1967. Our population has increased four times that amount. Our land use is much greater in the urban and agricultural zones, and our soil type isn't that, in, isn't that permeable. It's actually impermeable. So have we matched our drainage systems to meet the potential rainfall that another Beulah would hit, have in this day and age? I don't know the answer to that, yeah. but they are working on improving that so that we can handle something close to, to Beulah. You know, it was just three weeks ago that we had Hurricane Harvey come real close to the valley. Fortunately for us, it missed us. And, we, and of course, we, as we all know, went in around Rockport. But you have a storm of that magnitude today. If, that, if Harvey would have uh, turned into here, give me your thoughts on that. So if we assume that Harvey turns in and then slows down, we would have had the rain of Beulah or more. We could have had 20 to 30 inches, locally 35 inches. The mountains tend to dry things out a bit here, so it helps a bit. But we would have still had the winds, similar to Beulah, up to 130 to 140 mile per hour, which was measured near the mouth of the Rio Grande and actually at the ship channel uh, then. And in Brownsville, we had 109 mile per hour winds before the sensor failed. Wow. Yeah, and you know, and the thing is, is that Beulah didn't do exactly what Harvey did, but it did linger around for a couple days. It didn't just take off and go into central Texas or anything. So the, the, the big key there is it weakened, but they are still massive rain producers. I've been around in South Texas all my life. I've seen tropical depressions cause 20 inch rainfall totals. Yeah, and Houston's uh, rainfall memory event was her a tropical storm or depression, Allison, in 2001. Mm -hmm. The only retired non-hurricane name because of the 24 to 36 inches of rain and unfortunately about two dozen deaths. And then $9 billion in damage, and of course Harvey, we saw what that did. We're still counting up the numbers of, of dollars that was damaged. Yeah, Harvey, the storm that wouldn't go away. Exactly. You know, if we had something like that in the valley, you get 30 inches you know, here, it's not a whole lot different. No, our drainage uh, will really be tested here. We're also in a river delta because of the uh, low-lying area, so there's many more areas to flood, even if we had more wetlands available. We just don't know the final answer, but we have to be prepared as if that storm is coming any year between now and the future. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you again for stopping in. We've been looking back at this all week long, and again, we hope that we don't see another one of those here, but we're in the valley. We're on the Gulf Coast, so 